sin of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is
Holy Spirit, we need you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. Holy Spirit, we want to experience you. Experience you in our families, oh Lord. Move us. Move our families to their destiny. Lord, you have a purpose for each and every family. And Holy Spirit, come and speak to us. That we swing in action for the direction that we have, you have and for the vision that you have for our families. We invite you, Holy Spirit, come and minister to us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning again. Let us be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I can't hear you. Good morning. Hallelujah. I want to use my subject this morning, a family that seeks God. A family that seeks God. God is so intentional in the things that he does. So intentional that even your family has a purpose, has God's dream on the inside. There is the purpose of God for your family. And so the vision that God has for your family, a vision is like this. How many of us know this? How many of us know this? What is this? What is this? And God shows you a vision just like he shows you this. And that, this is God's vision for your life. When you see it, it's done. It's complete. It looks nice. And then you get to a time and you begin to unpack it. Let us unpack. And then God gives you this and you get started. Lo and behold, then you get started to begin to build that. And now, your family has got this. And today I call upon you to begin building. And here we go. And make sure you don't lose, you don't lose a piece. And then God begins to say, get started. This is not so big. It's only 1,000 pieces. And for your vision from God, it depends when you were in children's church, it was 100. But now, and so you begin to construct that. And God is calling all of us to have this in mind as we begin on that. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, your family vision, you're going to build it. God has a call upon your family. You're not in your family by coincidence. And you have the right DNA. You have the right DNA for that vision. Hallelujah. 
Our first service is in Luganda. Our second service is in English. Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Let us get onto our feet and read. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Verses 1 to 48. And as we invite people to church, we got to be clear that our first service is in, in, in Luganda and our second service is in English. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 1 to 48. Let us read together. Okay, go ahead and lead us. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Turner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. Verse 10, he became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, my, surely not, Lord. Peter replied, I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. Verse 17, while Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon was known, who was known as Peter was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? Um, the men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa went along. Verse 24. The following day, he arrived at Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house... Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence, but Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I'm only a man myself. Uh, talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile of this thing. But God has shown me that I should not call any, any man impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Verse 30. Cornelius answered, Four days ago in my house I was praying at this hour, at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Turner, who lives by the sea. 
So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Verse 34, then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favorism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who are under the power of the devil, because God was with him. Verse 39, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us, who ate and drank with him after he had rose from the dead. Verse 42, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets t testifying about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Verse 44, while Peter was still speaking, these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they had heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they, they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they, then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Hallelujah. Let us be seated. Thank you very much. Let us be seated. Again, I want to say that God has a vision for every family. This family, the family of Colonelius, to them, their dad was the leader of bringing them together. But to your family, we only have you for now. So I am going to speak to you while I speak to your family because in your family, we only have you. In that family, it is the father that began the move. But this family, God had put a vision for this family. The gospel was being preached and the gospel was for the entire world. But up until now, it was only among us, the Israelites. The children of Israel. Through this family, as they prayed, as they fasted, as they gave, as they, they were devoted to God, he brings his family together. And eventually, when he knows that there is a likelihood that God is going to move, he invites the neighbors, he invites the friends, and they all come together. And the angel of the Lord broke through this family. And they see a vision. And God tells them, go send people to Joppa. I want you to listen very carefully, very carefully to the Holy Spirit when he says send people. It means you're not going. You're keeping this place. You're keeping it prepared for what is coming ahead. But send for Peter. Send for Simon whose name is Peter. God is so specific. The Holy Spirit is so specific. He says, go to Joppa. And when you get to Joppa, ask for the, the house of Simon. Simon is a turner. 
And all these, the job of a tanner has its own issues with uh, the Jewish culture. But then Simon is at a tanner. And in Simon's house, there is Simon, whose name is Peter. At the same time, the Holy Spirit speaks to Peter. Brings down the entire world by the, all the directions. The south, the west, the north, the east. And on it is every animal that is called by the Jews unclean. Including the other animal that makes you smile. Every animal that the Jews call unclean. And he says to Peter, go ahead and eat. Do not call unclean what I have cleansed. Through this family, the gospel goes outside and comes to the Gentiles. That's a huge move of God. And that is something very new to the eyes of everyone. Even unto your family, God has got something new that he's going to do to this world through your family. Someone say amen. amen. Through your family. Now, I, I know you're scanning through your family and saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Look at my father. Look at so-and-so. Yes, in spite of the way it is today, God has a purpose for your family. And there is something new that is going to do to this world that has never existed before. And is going to do that through your family. Through this church family, God has done so many new things. But now through your biological family. So today, I want us to take the example that we have seen in the scriptures and begin to do something. Someone, number one, someone has got to introduce the family to God. And that someone is you. Tell your neighbor you have the responsibility of introducing your family, your biological family, to God. We start by going to God in prayer and pray for our families and speak to God about our families. Speak to God about our cousins. Speak to God about our relatives. Speak to God about our entire family. Someone has got to introduce the family to God. In that case of Acts chapter 10, it was Colonelius himself. But now, we do not have anyone but you. In your family, in this service, we do not have anyone but you. And it is incumbent upon you to begin praying. Prayer has got to be continuous and scheduled. Begin a family altar. Schedule and say, Every second and last Friday of the month, we are going to meet at 7 p.m. And we are going to pray for our family. I know that in the first meeting, it might only be you alone. But then you invite. You reach out. You ask them to come and pray for your family. That God will use that family. That the purposes of God that is going to, will come to pass. So you have prayer and prayer is continuous and prayer is scheduled at least once a month. We have to understand well the instructions of the Holy Spirit. As we begin to pray, we have to consider everything that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us and the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, even if it's in a dream, have a paper and a pen ready to pen it down. The faintest, the faintest ink is better than the greatest memory. 
Because by the time you wake up, when you say, I'm too sleepy to write, by the time you wake up, you begin to scratch your head and say, God showed me something. Let me see. There was uh, a jackfruit. A jackfruit. But it had no seeds. Let me see. Um, was it a jackfruit? Or a pumpkin? By the time you wake up, it, 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 and when you give it two days, what you saw as a gomez in two days is a sleeveless dress. You begin to lose. So you write it down. Why do we write it down? Because we are going to follow it to the later. We are going to go to the Holy Spirit and ask him, why did you show me a fruit without seeds? And maybe he's going to say, your family does not have seeds for the future in the kingdom. And you embark on no, you know, a journey to say there has to be seeds. There has to be a future for our family. You go back to the Holy Spirit and ask for even more details. Write it down. Go back to the Holy Spirit. Ask. When he said, send to Joppa, the man sent. And when you look at his sending, he says after he sent, he also put a faithful believing soldier to go along. Because even the people being sent had to go and had to be spirit led. So you follow the instructions and you follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. God has a plan for the world through your family. Your family vision might be as small as saying, we are going to feed three families around our grandfather's home every year. Three families. But in those three families is someone that God wants to make one of the greatest people in the, from the face of the earth. Do not dismiss as small what the Holy Spirit is speaking to your family. Because through your family, your family is an answer to God's people. You see, friends, let us not be reluctant about the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When God gives you giftings, when God gives you uh, a calling, when God gives your family something and you neglect it, you're saying, God, you chose the wrong family. We are putting this to waste, probably try elsewhere. So everything that God has got to, to do in our lives is not necessarily for us. It's, we are a blessing to the entire world. And God is pushing his blessing through our family. So, let us examine ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. Let us go back to the Holy Spirit. Examine how do I speak about myself to God. In those moments... When you're praying, but you're not actually praying. And you speak to God about yourself. How and what do you say to God about yourself? Even as you do about your family. Do you go before God and say, what did our family do to you? God, I want you to tell me today, what did our family do to you to deserve all this? What and how 
do you speak to God about yourself? Because now it's only you we have in your family. What do you say to God about you yourself? How do you speak to yourself about you? Because how you speak to God about you determines your spirituality. Determines your level of, of spirituality. How you speak to God about you is a mark about your spirituality, your level of spirituality. But how you speak to you, about you, shows where you are. Not where you're supposed to be. Where you are. When you speak to you about you, when you have these meetings, the meeting of three, me, myself, and I, when you speak to you about you, Some of you have even got names for yourself that we don't know and you don't want us to know. We had a minister here who used to call to refer to himself as, as simply an empty shirt. He would refer to himself as an empty shirt. If you ever went to watch any sports, maybe soccer, maybe basketball, maybe anything, people have got a number on their back. Number 16, number... And when they refer to one of those players as an empty shirt... They mean it's as good as not fielding him at all. There are 11 players, but they are only as good as 10. When you refer to yourself, how do you refer to you? How do you speak to yourself about you? And how do I speak about myself to others? When you open your mouth to speak to others. Now the other minister that I was telling you about, we would not have known he refers to himself as an empty shirt until he said that to us. This affects your relationships. Your relational positioning. How you speak to others about yourself. When how you speak to others about yourself begins to shape the idea that you are a liability to everyone you meet. You know, growing up, I grew up in a very, 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 very spiritual church. But at times we are too spiritual to be in touch with reality. And we had a number of brothers, some few sisters, but mainly a number of brothers. Whenever you saw them, you had to find some change in your pocket. You know, our hands have got a very good way of telling the difference between our notes. You'd, you'd try to find a 1,000 note. One time I was in America, it was time to give. I wanted to give a $20 note, but I did it the Ugandan way. And when I got home, my money wasn't balancing. Which means I didn't give a 20. I gave a 100 instead of giving a 20. But we had these brothers, There's, there was this one who was always sick. Suffering from asthma each time you met him. And he had a way of showing it. Oh, I'm sick. And you would feel his pain by the way he acted. 
But then he presented himself to us that each time you find him, he used the word, now that I've met you, I will not die. Sicha afude. Kanoke nkula bieko. Sicha afude. Now that I've met you, I will not die. Now he had terminologies and words he uses. If you give me only 2,000, Pastor Henry. Ngachiwede. I'm done. And now this 2,000 was to take him to town. And you always wondered how he would come back. How you speak to people about yourself. So when you're walking on Kampara Road and you see him, automatically you try to find where your 500 is. And I've told you this story before. When Philip, who is now 26, or he, yeah, when Philip was nine months old, I go to Watoto Church and all I have is money to buy milk for Philip, but I find this brother. And right outside the Watoto, he told me he had walked from Mulago. And he has asthma. And, and, and he gave me a, a, a story. At the end of that day, I gave him the money for the young baby's milk. And when I went up into the church, I didn't find the people I wanted to find, so I come back. And as I come back, I pass by Chippers. Some of you who are old enough to remember Chippers. Chippers was outside Watoto on Kampala Road, and they sold ice cream. And he was seated on a stool, like that one, up, enjoying ice cream. My baby's milk. Thou shalt not enjoy as ice cream. And from that time, I'm saying Philip was 26. I mean, Philip is 26 now. He was nine months. So for the next 20 years, each time he found me, asked for money, my answer was no. 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 I don't have. I don't have. I don't have. Until one time he finds me on Parliamentary Avenue and says, but pastor, you no longer love me. I said, why? He said, well, 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 you no longer give me money. I said, but do you love me? He said, of course I do. I said, how much do you give me? If the measure is how much we give to show love, how much have you ever in your life given me? And that's the last time he asked for money. But our relationships are destroyed or built depending on how we speak to people about ourselves. But the Holy Spirit is here today that we go with this back to him. That he gives us new content. The Holy Spirit upgrades us. The Holy Spirit promotes us. The Holy Spirit updates us on our journey. Maybe in your family, you are supposed to have started 10 years ago. And you have not started at all. The Holy Spirit will tell you where to start now. And the Holy Spirit will tell you how to build from there. Even in your own life, go back to the Holy Spirit with all this. Tell the Holy Spirit about you and allow the Holy Spirit to tell you about you. You'll have new content for you to speak to yourself. I was telling people in the first service, I bought, uh, I, in my third year, there were so many, so many interesting things in my, in my third year. It was dramatic. It was good. I was the youngest in our year. We were two people of my age. And my roommate, third and fourth year roommate, engineer, Pastor Kavuma, was the oldest. He doesn't fear to say that. 
and we were roommates. Each time we met people when we were walking in Kampala, we were a group of students, they would ask, hey, pastor, because pastor, Kavuma's name is pastor. So pronounce it pastor. So they say, pastor, how are you? How is your wife? Meaning he was too old. So they thought he was married. And said, she's fine. How is your home? It's well. How are your children? They are fine. And so the rest of the students would put him aside and say, you are a pastor, but you are a liar. How did you tell people that your wife is fine? She sa he said, she is very fine, actually. The only problem is I, ha I haven't found her. But she's at her parents' home, very fine. Soon I'll find her, get married to her. How do you speak to people about you? By the way, it's in that year that Pastor Net joined as a first year. So it was quite dramatic. It was a very good year. But anyway, I bought a Land Cruiser. Because I cut it out of a piece of newspapers. And I put it on the wall. And I got a key, a car key, and put it on my, on my keys. So the first thing I got on my car was a key. But that's how I spoke to myself. I also told people how I am going to have caravan crusades. Crusades for two months from one city to another, one week after the other at that time. That is still building. It's almost there. I told them how I was going to have this huge truck that carried all my crusade equipment and a van that went ahead of it and my own land cruiser that went with it and how we were going to preach the gospel. Then, 1992, the Holy Spirit will speak to you about you. And now, how you speak to you about you will have to change as according to what the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. And people will call you crazy. People will say salvation is being crazy. How is your wife? She's fine when you're single. Having a land cruiser when you're walking on foot before you have a bicycle. Having a whole crusade team before you have even one microphone. Let us go back to the Holy Spirit. Let him give us content. Let him upgrade us. Probably some of you are still at Windows 7. Or even earlier than that, when you used to use those disks. Remember the days we, we used? Thank you. Amen? Let us upgrade. Go back to the Holy Spirit and re-envision Speak to you about your family. Bring you to speed. Yes, you are a tenant and you have a landlord. But then you wake up to say, I will build nine houses for the people that don't have houses. In the name of Jesus. And as you say that, your landlord is knocking on the door. They say, Exactly, I know you're there, but that says me to me in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to build homes for the homeless in the name of Jesus. You begin to see what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. Out of one man, the gospel went out of only Israelites to the rest of the Gentiles. In the book of Acts chapter 16, there is this man that was play, praying in Macedonia. And Paul gets a dream being called to Macedonia. 
and the gospel went to Europe for the first time. Out of your family, the gospel is reaching to one village, reaching to another people that would never get the gospel without your family. Let us go back to the Holy Spirit. Let us get onto our feet right now. Let us go before Him. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Throughout this week, you are the only one that we have in your family. So may the Holy Spirit speak to you about your family. You're the only one that we have. I remember in 1997, we fly out of Entebbe, headed to London. It was on Kenya Airlines. I was seated with Pastor Kavuma, who was my roommate. And as we took off from Entebbe Airport, he told me that everything you used to say at school is coming to pass. I asked him, what was I saying? He said, you said, once we finish school, you're going to enter the clouds to go and preach the gospel. May the Holy Spirit fill your mouth with words of prophecy. Words of prophecy. Prophecy about yourself. Prophecy about your family. And you speak them. When you speak to you, you're speaking to the you that God has made. When you're speaking to your family, you're speaking words from the mouth of God into your family. That your family will become exactly that that God has called it for. When you speak to people, you speak about the you that God has made, not the you that you are. And your relationships will improve, will become better and better with time. Because of the Holy Spirit speaking your vision back to you. And you prophesying over yourself. Prophesying over your family. Prophesying over each and everything around you. Lift your voice and speak to your family right now. Relift your voice and speak into the life of your family right now. That call of God upon your family. That dream of God upon your family. That vision of God upon your family. Let it come to pass. Let it come to pass. Let it come to pass. And you're going to be involved in the formation. You're going to be involved in the trenches. You're going to be involved in the hard work. But yes, you're going to do it. And your family will fulfill the the will of God upon your family. Your family will fulfill the fact for which you were called. In the name of Jesus, that you'll be a family that moves for Jesus. A family that opens doors for others. A family that builds people. A family that pays school fees for people that you don't even know. A family that takes people to school. A family that is an educational family. In the name of Jesus, that lives will change because God is working His will through your family. God is working His will through His people. God is working His will through you. You are the one that is going to initiate. You are the one that is bringing it before God. You are the one that is going to do it. In the name of Jesus, speak, speak, speak unto your family. Speak unto your family. Speak life, speak hope. Speak victory in the name of Jesus. The dreams that you have had about your family, the dreams that you have had about your people, the dreams that you have had, may they come to pass in the name of Jesus. May the Holy Spirit move you in a mighty way. May a new doors be opened. New doors be opened because now you're ready. Because now you're ready. Because now you're ready. Let new doors be opened in the name of Jesus. Let God bring people, people that are going to partner with you, people that are going to partner with you as you do the will of God, as you fulfill the call of God upon your family, as you fulfill the call of God upon your family. In the name of Jesus, 
And Father, right now I speak a blessing and all the people gathered this morning, this afternoon, early afternoon. Let your mighty hand rest upon them, O oh God. I speak your blessing. Let those hands get the power to create wealth because we know that all the work that you, we do, it takes money to fulfill it. May these people have an abundance of money that they will be able to do everything that you tell them, even without collecting from a number of people. Lord, let your blessing sit upon them. I speak your protection in the name of Jesus. Protection. I refuse every accident. I refuse every accident in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your hand rest upon them now and forever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.